Rise of sea levels is the greatest lie ever told. Fresh, liquid water has a density of 1 gram per cubic centimeter, 1 gram equals 1 cubic centimeter, every cubic centimeter liquid water will weigh 1 gram. By the formula above, mass per density equals volume, and basic logic, we know that 10 grams of liquid water would take up 10 cubic centimeters of volume, 10 grams per 1 gram per cubic centimeter equals 10 cubic centimeter. So let's say that our 10 gram ice cube has a density of only 0.92 grams per cubic centimeter. By the formula above, 10 grams of mass that has a density of 0.92 grams per cubic centimeter will take up about 10.9 cubic centimeters of space, 10 grams per 0.92 gram per cubic centimeter equals 10.9 cubic centimeter. Again, the volume of 10 grams of frozen water is more than the volume of 10 grams of its liquid counterpart. The floating ice cube has a mass of 10 grams, so based on Archimedes principle 1, it is displacing 10 grams of water, which has 10 cubic centimeter of volume. You can't squeeze a 10.9 cubic centimeter ice cube into a 10 cubic centimeter space, so the rest of the ice cube, about 9% of it, will be floating above the water line. So what happens when the ice cube melts? The ice shrinks, decreases volume, and becomes more dense. The ice density will increase from 0.92 gram per cubic centimeter to that of liquid water, 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Note that the weight will not, and cannot, change. The mass just becomes more dense and smaller, similar to putting blocks back into their original positions in our Jenga tower. We know the ice cube weighed 10 grams initially, and we know its density, 1 gram per cubic centimeter, so let's apply the formula to determine how much volume the melted ice cube takes. The answer is 10 cubic centimeters, 10 g per 1 gram per cubic centimeter equals 10 cubic centimeter, which is exactly the same volume as the water that was initially displaced by the ice cube. In short, the water level will not change as the ice cube melts.